Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School Class 1 2, TAC 2 2. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 1000, Captain Alcorn, United States Navy Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Rutenberg, United States Navy Guest of Honor for today's ceremony will arrive. Guests will be asked to rise for the, the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and guest of honor. Guests will be asked to rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Rear Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Carter will now offer the invocation. Let's take a moment and ask the Lord's blessing, shall we? Let's pray. Gracious God and Lord of us all, this morning we humbly ask your blessing to be on these new officers who in the tr tradition of the centurion know that they are men and women under authority, responsible to honor you, our country, our Navy, and to be mindful of the sacred charge that they will soon be entrusted with, that is, naval leadership. We thank you for giving each the strength and inner fortitude to complete a difficult and challenging period of discipline and training. And as they scatter worldwide to serve our nation, we send them confident that they have what it takes to succeed. Make them this day aware of the great responsibilities being placed upon their shoulders. Bless them with wisdom, courage, dedication to duty, and pour a special measure of your favor on those who have given so unselfishly of themselves to train these officer candidates and to prepare them to stand at the gates of freedom. These mercies we ask for the sake of your redeeming grace, through he who was dead, yet now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Rutenberg, General Wallace, distinguished guests, Officer Training Command, Newport staff, family members, and friends. Most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers, Class 1222. Good morning. I'm excited to welcome 64 of our newest graduates into one of the most challenging and rewarding careers, that of a Naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you've done preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. I appreciate the support you have given them. It's enabled them to make sound choices and we are grateful for these graduates that choose to serve. We thank you for your continued support. To the graduates here today, as commanding officer of the Officer Training Command, I'm proud of all of you. You had many other choices than to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds rewards and will bring great fulfillment. You have completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was given to you except for opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself to learn, to grow, and to lead. You seize that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity to lead sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you're going to be doing significant and meaningful work for our country. Work hard, learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator, strive to be the best and give your country your best efforts. Nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You're about to embark upon a great adventure an adventure in which I hope you find both professional and personal success. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had or will ever have. Regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my honor and privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Eric Rutenberg, Vice Chief Engineer, Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command. Admiral Rutenberg is a native of Redondo Beach, California. He's a 1988 graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy and a graduate of the Naval Postgraduate School. He was designated a Naval Aviator in 1990 and an Information Warfare Officer Space Cadre in 2011. His initial sea duty assignment was to Helicopter Combat Support Squadron 11, where he flew the H-46 and deployed aboard USS Flint during Desert Storm and aboard USS Kansas City in support of Operation Southern Watch. Later, he served at Fleet Composite Squadron 6 in Pax River, Maryland, as the safety department head flying the Pioneer Unmanned Airborne Surveillance Vehicle on surveillance and reconnaissance mission. Ashore, he served at the National Reconnaissance Office in Chantilly, Virginia, Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command 366 in Chantilly, Virginia, and at the Naval Security Reserve Group. He served as U.S. Special Ops Operations Command, Deputy J-6, supporting the acquisition of multi-mission communication architecture, supporting both special operations and intelligence organizations. His command tours include Navy Reserve Spay War 366, Navy Reserve Spay War 866 in Chantilly, Virginia, Spay War 466 in San Diego, California, as Commander Naval Information Forces Reserve, Region Washington, D.C., and as Commander Naval Reserve Spay War Headquarters, Recurrent serves as the director of the Spay War Reserve Program in San Diego, California. His first flag officer assignment was as Deputy Program Executive Officer, Enterprise Information Systems from October 2018 to July 2019, and he assumed the duties as Chief Engineer of NAVWAR, where he leads a workforce to design, develop, and deploy advanced communications and information capabilities. 
His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are truly fortunate to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Eric Rutenberg. First, thanks for not nodding off while he read that long bio. Uh, thanks, Captain Alcorn, uh, for inviting me to speak this morning to our newest ensigns and uh, to your staff uh, for the superb support that they provided uh, before I came out. Uh, graduates in the class of 12 to TAC 22, congratulations on your commissioning and welcome to the greatest wardroom there is. No one earns the honor of becoming a Naval officer without the support of our families and friends. So please join me in a round of applause to thank yours for the support they've provided to get you to this moment. When you started on this path, you probably didn't think that Staff Sergeant Thompson or Senior Chief Johnson as family, but know that they were looking out for you along the way and shaping you into the leaders that you are today and the leaders that our Navy needs. Over the past, fa past 15 weeks, you've shown your instructors, the class officers, and the OCS staff that you not only have the physical, but also the mental toughness it takes to be leaders in our Navy. From here forward, there'll be no getting sandy as you obey orders to drop down for push-ups and mountain climbers. Now, you'll rely on yourself. How you do anything is how you do everything, and you want and need to be physically and mentally ready. As you've learned here, there's much more to war fighting and sailor readiness than toughness. Let's consider sustained performance, grit, and resilience. Each of us has had significant challenges at some point in our career, and what differentiates great leaders is that they use those failures to drive a constant and never-ending culture of improvement. This resiliency is what allows you as leaders in our great Navy to look at diversity in the eye and chart a path forward leading our sailors through challenging times. Throughout the Navy and your Navy career, you will have the opportunity to connect and build a level of trust with your shipmates just as you did here with your fellow candidates. Trust is a critical attribute in our community and one that is earned every day through your actions and your words. Knowing that you share with your fellow sailors the same values of honor, courage, and commitment goes a long way in building that trust. So too does respect when leading our sailors to do their best. How you build that trust and respect will be critical to your success and the success of your future commands. This leads me to the importance of knowing your sailors not just how they're doing today, but where they came from, what path they're on, and what their aspirations are in life. Each sailor's, ex is, each sailor's experience is as unique as they are, and I ask that you listen to their stories. This is behavioral leadership. It comes from within you, and it's not based on the position you're in. The sailors that you'll work with in the fleet are unparalleled in their ingenuity. They will solve problems that you didn't even know you had. Leadership is understanding the talents that each individual brings, creating an environment that fosters innovation, takes risk, and champions learning from failures. Actively seeking diversity and inclusion when problem solving is crucial. This type of leadership mitigates groupthink, increases innovation, and more often than not, quickly yields actionable solutions. The Navy you're joining is the world's dominant maritime force because of our sailors. And now you have the privilege and responsibility of leading them. This will be one of the most challenging and rewarding opportunities that you'll ever have in your life. As you depart for your new commands, know that regardless of the wardroom size, you are one team. As with any team, you've been part of, the success of that team hinges on how well you work together. Help your shipmates, swarm on problems, and be the kind of teammate that you choose to have. Your instructors have provided you with the initial knowledge required to, be, to enter the fleet and lead our sailors. And this is just the beginning of your opportunity to learn. 
I encourage you to be a lifelong learner. Read, advance your education, and take assignments that will challenge you to be an even better leader. Our Navy culture, the trust we have in each other, and our ability to execute anytime, anywhere, and under any condition is what makes our Navy the greatest fighting force in the world. Every day, world events remind us that democracy must be defended. The unprovoked Russian invasion of democratic Ukraine and China's constant challenges to our Navy's superiority in all domains from the seabed to space mean that your leadership is needed now more than ever. Our job in defending democracy is to win wars, deter aggression, and dominate in the maritime environment. Admiral Gilday recently stated, history shows the Navy which adapts, learns, and improves the fastest, gains an enduring warfighting advantage. The essential element is fostering an ecosystem, a culture that assesses, corrects, and innovates better than the opposition. I am confident that each of you can build and nurture that culture as you lead our sailors so that our Navy will be ready to win any challenge anywhere against any adversary. Your leadership will ensure that we remain the world's best away team, ensuring and, and that every and any fight doesn't occur on our homeland. Let me leave you with three parting instructions. First, listen, learn, and lead. Listen to your chiefs, understand what they're talking about, and lead once you've made a decision. Second, be a mentor and seek mentorship. Choose five to 10 diverse mentors of various ranks, commands, and communities, and do the same when you look to mentor five to 10 junior sailors or enlisted. Third and last, avail yourself to all the opportunities that the Navy offers. Take diverse and challenging jobs and have fun in every assignment. I look forward to serving with you, fighting alongside you, and watching you as you lead our greatest sailors in the world. Congratulations and welcome aboard. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention. Class 1 2, TAC 2 2. Raise your right hand. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer for their achievements while undergoing training while here at Officer Training Command Newport. Ensign Outlaw has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas Eady Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Additionally, he has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Award for obtaining the highest academic average while attending officer candidate school. And now law is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Paul Ignatius DDG-117 in Rota, Spain. And now law is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Morgan has been awarded the Chapel Clardy USMC Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Morgan is a Civil Engineering Corps officer and is assigned to the Civil Engineer Corps Officer School in Port Wenami, California. Ensign Morgan is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Morris has been awarded the Commander Jack Leadership Award, 
having been chosen by his peers as the candidate who most inspired his class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. Ensign Morris is an intelligence officer and is assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic School in Damneck, Virginia. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Backus is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to USS Green Bay LPD 20 in Sasebo, Japan. Ensign Schick is an aviation maintenance duty officer and is assigned to Strike Fighter Squadron 213 in Oceana, Virginia. Ensign Tayek is a cryptologic warfare officer and is assigned to Division Officer Leadership Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Jefferson is an information professional officer and is assigned to information professional basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Ong is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Chancellorsville CG-62 in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Nalud is an intelligence officer and is assigned to intelligence officer basic school in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Watson is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Boxer, LHD-4, in San Diego, California. Ensign Heber is an information professional officer and is assigned to information professional basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Scala is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Chung Hoon, DDG-9-3, in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Abbott is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Roosevelt, TDG-8-0, in Rota, Spain. Ensign Abbott is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Adams is a cryptologic warfare officer and is assigned to Division Officer Leadership Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Alvarado is a submarine officer and is assigned to Nuclear Power School in Goose Creek, South Carolina. Ensign Aragon is a cryptologic warfare officer and is assigned to Division Officer Leadership Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Bewley is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to USS Momsen, DDG-92, in Everett, Washington. Ensign Bolas is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Lathe Gulf CG-55 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Cabal is a supply officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Carter is a Naval Supply Officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Clayton is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Shoup, DDG-56 in San Diego, California. Ensign Davis is a Civil Engineering Corps officer and is assigned to the Civil Engineering Corps Officer School in Port Wenamee, California. Ensign Davis is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Davu is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS Sampson, DDG-102 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Ferguson is a surface warfare officer and is assigned to the USS John P. Murtha, LPD-26 in San Diego, California. Ensign Flexenar. Ensign Flexenar is an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic School in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Fontana. Ensign Fontana is a Supply Corps officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Gao. Ensign Gao is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Tripoli LHA-7 in San Diego, California. Ensign Greg March. Ensign Greg March is a Student Naval Flight Officer and is assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation Course in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Guillermo. Ensign Guillermo is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Oak Hill LSD-51 in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Hibbard. Ensign Hibbard is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Mobile Bay CG-53 in San Diego, California. Ensign James. Ensign James is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Iwo Jima LHD-7 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Jensen. Ensign Jensen is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS John Finn DDG-113 in San Diego, California. Ensign Kazabowski. Ensign Kazabowski is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Sampson, DDG-102 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Latz. Ensign Latz is a Service Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS McCampbell, DDG-85 in San Diego, California. Ensign Leach. Ensign Leach is a Supply Corps Officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps Officer School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign LaCroix. Ensign LaCroix is a Submarine Officer and is assigned to Nuclear Power School in Goose Creek, South Carolina. Ensign Leon. Ensign Leon is an informational professional officer and is assigned to informational professional basic course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Malvo. Ensign Malvo is a service warfare officer and is assigned to USS The Sullivan's DDG 68 in Mayport, Florida. Ensign Marquez. Ensign Marquez is a service warfare officer and is assigned to USS Anchorage LPD 23 in San Diego, California. Ensign Marr. Ensign Marr is a cryptological warfare officer and is assigned to divisional officer leadership course in Damneck, Virginia. 
Ensign Matthews. Ensign Matthews is an intelligence officer and is assigned a Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Matthews is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Moore is a Meteorological and Oceanographical Officer and is assigned a Naval Ocean Processing Facility in Woodby Island, Washington. Ensign Moore is a Supply Corps Officer and is assigned a Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Morin. Ensign Morin is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned the USS Chung Hoon DDG-93 in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Mu. Ensign Mu is a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and is assigned a Civil Engineering Corps Officer School in Port Huaynimi, California. Ensign Neal. Ensign Neal is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Cape St. George CG-71 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Pham. Ensign Pham is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Comstock LSD-45 in San Diego, California. Ensign Scarfone. Ensign Scarfone is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Cape St. George CG-71 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Schmidt. Ensign Schmidt is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS O'Kane DDG-77 in San Diego, California. Ensign Schmoll. Ensign Schmoll is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Gettysburg CG-64 in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Shutt. Ensign Shutt is a, is a Student Naval Flight Officer and is assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Slyke. Ensign Slyke is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Bulkley DDG-84 in Rota, Spain. Ensign Slyke is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Smith. Ensign Smith is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS John S. McCain, DDG-56 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Smith. Ensign Smith is a Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Wayne Meyer, DDG-108 in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Snow. Ensign Snow is an Informational Professional Officer and is assigned to Informational Professional Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Spindell. Ensign Spindell is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Fitzgerald, DDG-62 in San Diego, California. Ensign Sturm. Ensign Sturm is a student naval flight officer and is assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Thornton. Ensign Thornton is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Chosen CG-65 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Trin. Ensign Trin is a Naval Supply Officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Troy. Ensign Troy is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to the USS San Antonio LPD-17 in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Wallace. Ensign Wallace is a Cryptological Warfare Officer and is assigned to Divisional Officer Leadership Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Wilds. Ensign Wilds is a Naval Supply Officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Ziegler. Ensign Ziegler is a Surface Warfare Officer and is assigned to USS Lake Champlain, CG-57 in San Diego, California. Ensign Zivic. Ensign Zivic is a Naval Supply Officer and is assigned to Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and its final dismissal. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo. And, rem and remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field.
On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the graduation ceremony.